YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and in this video the Ravens just had a presser that featured one John Harbaugh one Lamar Jackson and one Brandon Williams now on Brandon Williams part it's no offense to him y'all know we got love for big baby but Pookie she had to go out to the bathroom so I had to take her out that's my golden retriever by the way uh, so I didn't get to catch that but we did catch everything else and before we get into it shout out to Carter because Carter made this for me he said daddy this is for you this is for your office and i told him that i would be showing it to team keep it clean so appreciate y'all love y'all and let's get into it and again it started off with john harbaugh now i it started it said it was starting at five and i can't i was ready at five but it started early so i, I missed some of john harbaugh what he said but from where i caught it at he said that every single game it's like playing in the college national championship game every single week and it has been and, and something that I've been saying is that it seems like every single game is such a big game for the Ravens because it is like you start off week one against the Raiders AFC opponent big game Monday Night Football then you turn right around you stay in the AFC West you play the Chiefs big game and then you follow that up you play the Lions NFC opponent but you just got the feeling like they can't start off one and two they can't start off one and two you much rather go two and one big game and then the Broncos, these dudes are 3-0, they undefeated. They really feeling themselves. They, they, and they're a good team there. But big game, AFC opponent, AFC West again. So then you turn around, and then you play the uh, Colts. Monday Night Football, this team is 1-3. But they had some close games with some really good teams. But they 1-3. And, three. and a, a, a team like that is scary to play. Big game, especially the way that it went. And now you turn around, and you got to play the Chargers. Big game, 4-1 versus 4-1. So I 1,000% understood what Harbaugh was saying. 1,000, I think we all did. Now, a question that he was asked, he, he, asked, he was asked how he feels the inside the linebacker play has been. And Harbaugh, so he sort of got petty with it at first, but then he said that they can certainly play better, and he said we need more. And when he said that, I was just, I was shocked. Because we know that Harbaugh, he, and, and, and you can understand why, but you know Harbaugh, as some, a question like that, he would normally sugarcoat it. He's like, oh no, these guys are playing great. These guys are playing phenomenal. These guys are playing good. And you don't want to put your guys on national blast, or to the, not, not that it's national, but you don't want to put them on blast to the media and stuff. But at the same time, I was just, I really appreciated that Harbaugh was real about it. Or more honest about it. I know he wasn't a thousand percent honest. I know he ain't gonna come out there and say, "Oh man, these guys are playing terrible. They can't tackle. They can't cut." They, they, oh man, he, I know he ain't gonna say all that. I don't expect him to, because you don't want to throw your guys under the bus like that. But I just I appreciated that he even acknowledged that because we know what it really means. Uh, but he of course can't say it verbatim. Anyway, um, he talked about Tavon Young's penalty. He said that you can't retaliate because they always get the second guy. Man, it's true. He said Tay Tay even sent him a text text and, and, and told him. He said he regretted it and whatnot. And we all know, like I said, though, with, with Tavon Young, it was, you got to look at it because he's a human. He's a human being. So human beings have emotions. They have feelings. And for him, when he did retaliate, I know we were all frustrated. Like, why would you do that? But then you see that replay and a lot of y'all are thinking, oh, I'll probably do the same thing too. Um... He talked about Sammy Watkins. He didn't really give a detailed update on him. He just said he's dealing with the hamstring injury. So he just Sammy with the hammy right now. So we just got to wait it out. And then he asked, I love this question. Somebody asked him if he was still amazed at seeing the different type of stuff that Lamar Jackson does. And he said he isn't surprised by any of it. None of it. And he said maybe the, uh, the national media, they might be, but he's not, not one bit. Because th this was almost an expectation for him. So that I, I, I just I, I really appreciated that a lot. Now, Lamar Jackson was up next, and it was like Lamar Jackson must have been sitting there posted up waiting because literally right after Harbaugh got off, they they put the screen that said uh what did they say please wait or whatever it says I forget what it says on their the, their pause screen or whatever, and then Lamar came like right after like right after Harbaugh got off. So he must have been ready, man. Anyway, I wonder if he had the little, the little Browns game stomach going on and he wanted to get that thing over with. Anyway, um, they asked him, how did you feel winning that AFC Offensive Player of the Week award? How did you feel about that, Lamar? 
And if you all watched the video earlier today, something that I talked about with Lamar Jackson is something that we've seen since his rookie year, and it hasn't changed. Whenever people try to give him praise on something, whenever they say, Lamar, you did such a good job at this, you did such a good job at that, oh man, you're great at this, you're great at that, da 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 he always deflects it to his teammates, always deflects it to his teammates. But then if it comes to something bad, like an interception, a fumble, turnover, bad throw, any of that, that's when he's pointing the finger at himself every single time. But anyway, they asked him how it felt to win the AFC Offensive Player of the Week award. And he said, it's pretty cool, but it's a team effort. So he deflected it right to the team. And that's Lamar Jackson. That's what he does. Um, he was asked about the offensive line, and he said they've been getting better every single week. And that is something that I would agree with, especially when you look at week one. Um, and they've been, they've been up and down, but, yeah, they, they have certainly been uh, getting better. Um, he was asked if he was trying to showcase his passing ability since he hadn't been running as much. Uh, and he, like, he would have a, a lane in front of him where he could take off. And a lot of us at home would be like, oh, Lamar, take off. Well, he would throw the ball. And the, the reporter asked him, are you, are you trying to like show off your throwing ability or what now? What, what is it? He said, I'm just trying to win. Just trying to win. And I said, ooh, Lamar with them answers, boy. He's, again, a lot done changed. Because I remember, remember Lamar's rookie year. You could tell he's very uncomfortable in the media. And that's a lot. Like, you became the face of a franchise. And you were so young. This is like college, you were super popular there, but... This is the pros, and now you're becoming super popular, super fast. You got all these cameras in your face. It could be overwhelming, but he's certainly uh, come a long way. Um, they talked about the game, if it's been slowing down for him. And he said, yeah, every year it's been getting slower and slower. And he said this year it got a little slower, a little faster, if that makes sense. Or it got a little slower, a little earlier. That's a better way to put it. But he said that um, hopefully it keeps getting slower. And, yes, we all keep, we, we, we keep hoping the same thing, too. So that was nice to hear. Um, he said that uh, he hasn't even seen his peak yet. And when he said that, I was like, oh, OK, now. OK. And I, and I like that. And some may see that as uh, a, a, a boost or a, a sort of arrogance or cockiness. But if you have been watching or listening to Lamar Jackson when he speaks, even when he speaks of himself, if he says he hasn't hit his peak yet, then that means that he's he got a lot of more work to do and that he feels like he ain't scratched the surface of how good he can be and that he just doesn't feel he's there yet. And with what he's been doing, <laughs> that's that's a good thing. That's a great thing because he's a great quarterback right now, but he could be even better. Anyway, um, he was asked if one of these crazy games, if any of them ranks higher than the other one. Because it's been a lot of craziness. And he said, no, they all the same. Um, and he said that he he don't really want to do all the craziness. He said he'd much rather get out to a more comfortable lead so he could be on the sidelines and chill. And we have we only seen that in the uh in the, the what's it called game? In the uh the Broncos game. That's it. Other than that, every single game has been filled with the stress and the drama and the craziness, and it's just been wild. So, and again, this is, now we getting, I mean, we got it some, somewhat last year too, but now we, this is the, the normal Ravens games. Like 2019, that was, that was a dream, straight up. That, was, that wasn't real. 2019 season for the Ravens, that wasn't real. You thought that was a real season? No, it wasn't. It, was, it wasn't. Ravens, like that? Blowing all those teams out? Having these crazy comfortable? No, that's not Ravens. Ravens are the, the stressful team. They like to give you the, the, the heart attacks, the headaches, the just all that stuff. But anyway, um, he, uh, he said that he hasn't really watched Justin Herbert that much. Hasn't got a chance to watch that game. He said he sees some stuff on Instagram and whatnot. And he said hopefully that, that Justin Herbert, he not too hyped this weekend. And he don't go all out against the Ravens. And yeah, we hoping that he doesn't, he doesn't do the same thing either. Because that would be very unfortunate. Um, and uh, my guy, my guy, David, shout out to my guy, David. He asked him if, uh, if Lamar felt he should have been in the 99 club. And he said he, he felt he should have been there. He said he don't know what Madden, was, what, what Madden got going on. And my guy asked him, too, uh, he said, do you, with, in Madden, he said, he said some, some people text him and said that, not Lamar, but the reporter, he said some people text him and were like, hey, do you, uh, well, for what you did with the completion percentage and the yards and the touchdowns and all that, 
People are saying they can't even do that in Madden. But you did it in real life. And Lamar said he could do it in Madden too. Now, I ain't know Lamar got down in Madden. I ain't know that. I ain't, I ain't think he was a Madden person. But, hey, I would like to see that. I'd like to see a little Lamar versus Hollywood and Madden. Hollywood probably dust him, though. But anyway, he also said that he appreciated the refs roughing a passer call. And he said that it was fair. He said he even remember the uh, ref's name and all. And his name was Mr. Clark. And I was like, okay, yeah, he really appreciated that call a lot. And, um, and even with that, uh, I think it was Jeff Zrebic that pointed out that that was the first rough in the passer call that the Ravens got in their favor since December of 2019. December of 2019. So you mean to tell me that these dudes have went through an entire season and change to where they did not get one rough in the passer call. An entire season and change. That's crazy. Like, think of that. That's crazy. That is so crazy. And you mean to tell me, like, Lamar ain't take no shots in the backfield late? All them times? All those games? <laughs> hey, numbers don't always tell the whole story. But in that case, they pretty much do. And that's just, that's, that's wild. But, hey, this is why Lamar Jackson as an NFL quarterback, you have power with that. And coincidentally, who, who knows if it's, this is just coincidence or not, but we remember uh, in a presser last week where Lamar Jackson said that all quarterbacks need to be protected. He said all of them need to be protected. He was talking about the late hits that the Broncos were doing. And coincidentally, the very next game, he gets his first one called on him since December 2019. Coincidence? Who knows? Anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And we are out.